If you are just getting started with learning European Portuguese, you probably have a ton of questions and don't really know where to start. I know it can be super overwhelming, especially if you're actually moving to Portugal, you are gonna have a ton of other things that you need to do as well at the same time. So let me help you. My name is Liz and I specialize in teaching European Portuguese to people who are coming to Portugal and who maybe don't even have any experience in learning a second language. So don't worry, I've got you. In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the most frequently asked questions that I get that are gonna set you off on the right foot. So whether that's about how to start learning the language or about some of the finer points of grammar and things like that, this is a really good place to start. So give this video a like if you are ready to get started and make sure that you hit subscribe if you want practical Portuguese lessons in plain English from me every single week. I'm here to help you build your confidence and your conversation skills and I would love to have you as a member of this awesome YouTube community. So hit the button and the bell now. So let's get started with the biggest question most of you ask when you're getting started and that is, should I learn Brazilian or European Portuguese? Now the answer to this one completely depends on your own objectives and your reasons for learning. They are the same language, but they are obviously spoken in different countries. So if you have Brazilian friends, a Brazilian partner, an upcoming trip to Brazil, then yes, it makes the most sense to use Brazilian Portuguese. And that is where you'll find the majority of resources for learning online, purely because it's a much bigger market. There's like over 200 million Brazilians. So it makes sense that that's where most language um, businesses are focusing their efforts. However, if you are moving to Portugal or you want to get in touch with your Portuguese roots um, or you have an upcoming trip to Portugal, then of course it makes sense to be learning the Portuguese that is spoken here. Now, why is that? Most people say, well, isn't it just the difference between like, you know, American and British English? And I would say actually, no, the differences are much more profound. We have differences in pronunciation. We have differences in grammar, sentence structure, uh, vocabulary. All of these things are quite different. And even though you will be understood between those two, to listen to, they sound very different. It's actually much easier for us to hear what is being said when someone is speaking Brazilian Portuguese. There are a number of reasons for this. Um, the stress that is used, the open vowels that are used. Now, I do have several videos where I go into more detail on this that you can check out if you are interested. But the main reason is this. If you are learning Brazilian Portuguese and then you come to Portugal, what you are hearing is going to sound very different. Written down, you'll be able to get by. Yes, it's the same language, you'll be able to be understood. But what you are actually hearing when Portuguese people speak is going to sound very different if you're only used to listening to Brazilian Portuguese. So that's why I recommend that you just start as you mean to go on. Think about your reason for learning, your objective, and then decide from there which is going to be the most useful for you. It isn't a case of one being better or more interesting or more accessible or more useful to learn. That really has nothing to do with it and it makes me really sad when people argue about that kind of stuff. It really does come down to why you're gonna be using Portuguese. And so it really does just make sense to match your decision with that. Next question is, which apps should I use to learn? Now, again, you're gonna to wanna to be careful with this based on what I just told you. You're gonna be wanting to learn the type of Portuguese that you're actually going to be using and listening to. So that's why you need to look out for things like Duolingo that do only teach you Brazilian Portuguese. Google Translate is another one. They are kind of adding in Portuguese from Portugal, but it's not quite as widespread. So I do have a whole video on some of the most useful apps. Some of them are free, some of them you do have to pay a subscription for, but basically there are lots more options out there now if you are choosing to learn Portuguese from Portugal. Some of the most common ones that I recommend are Memrise and Drops, and also I can't forget Lyrics Training, which actually helps you improve your language skills using music. I love music, so this was perfect for me. Another super common question is, how do I get accents on my keyboard? So when you are learning to write in Portuguese, you are going to need to use accents. It's very important for the way that you pronounce the words and also the way that you stress the words. So we need some clues about how those are gonna sound. So that's why accents are so important. So I did put together a whole video on how to get accents on your keyboard, whether you use a Windows or a Mac machine. It is a little bit fiddly 
easily to get to grips with, but I really do recommend that you give this a go because it's gonna make a really big difference to your written Portuguese. So I'll link that one in the description for you to check out in more detail. Now, once you start getting into learning Portuguese and starting with some practical phrases, some more questions about the language itself are going to come up. A lot of these center around what is the difference between? So let's take a look at some similar or even interchangeable phrases and explain the difference between those. So, what's the difference between se faz favor and por favor? Well, there isn't really much difference. They both mean please. I do tend to put se faz favor into my examples a lot more because it's really, really common to hear that one here and it sounds really Portuguese if you can get it right. Next, people often ask, what's the difference between desculpe and desculpa? Okay, so you can see that one ends in an E, one ends in an A. They both mean excuse me, but why do we have this slight difference here? This is down to being formal versus informal, which I'll go on to talk about a bit later in the video. So the one ending in the E, uh, desculpe, the E, this one is the polite version. Desculpa with an A is the more friendly version. You don't have to worry too much about which one you're gonna use because A, it's a polite word, and B, you're actually not gonna hear a huge difference between those two endings because you know the Portuguese like to drop the endings off, but I would recommend using desculpa, the polite one. But what about the difference between desculpa and con licença? Again, if you look these up, they will both mean excuse me, but there is a subtle difference between when we would use each of these words. Desculpa is actually asking for forgiveness and con licença is asking for permission. So I would use con licença if I was trying to get past somebody, for example, that's a really common time that you're gonna be using it. Con licença, you just wanna get past. With your permission, I would like to move past you. Whereas desculpe is gonna be more like if you've bumped into somebody and you want to say sorry, you want to ask for forgiveness. They can both be used to get at somebody's attention, for example, in a restaurant or something like that. So there are occasions where we might use one or the other, but that is the subtle difference between the two. If you have more questions that you want to ask that are not covered in the video, you can drop them in the comments and I will try and answer as many as I can. I also answer a lot of frequently asked questions in my free lesson for beginners, which is linked in the description. I call it my quick start guide to Portuguese and I highly recommend it as your starting place. Next up, should I use personal pronouns? Now, what is a personal pronoun? It's the little word that goes before the verb. If we're saying something like, eu gosto. I like, okay, so the il is what's standing in for the I. Now, do we need these in Portuguese? Well, again, the answer is that it depends. In English, it's very, very necessary. I need, you need, she needs. Unless we have the I, you, she, we actually don't really know who's being talked about. But that's not the case in Portuguese. We do know who we are talking about because we have to conjugate the verb and it's gonna have a different ending depending on who we are talking about. So if I say gosto, I can only be talking about myself because that O ending does mean I. So I don't have to put it in there. I can if I really want to emphasize it. Or if we look at the third person, for example, gosta, that can actually apply to he, she, and you polite. So this is one of the instances where we probably would insert the personal pronoun just so we can make it really clear who we are talking about. There's a full video on that here, but that is basically the overview. Next up, I am often asked the differences between two verbs that seem very similar. So for example, pensar and achar, or poder and conseguir, or even caminhar and andar. These are verbs that do have very similar meanings, but again, it's important to know and understand the difference. Usually when we have two verbs that are very similar, one is gonna have a very straightforward literal meaning, and the other one is gonna have more of a figurative meaning or actually mean more things, all right? So if we take the example of pensar and achar, Pensar is literally to think, to think about someone or something or to have a thought. Whereas achar can be a bit of a broader meaning. It can be what your perspective is on something. 
Achei muito interessante. I thought it was very interesting. I considered it very interesting. So it's a bit more of a broad meaning. I did do a whole hour long live session on confusing verbs. So you should definitely check that one out as well, where I go into more detail about some of these verbs that seem very similar, but are actually used in different circumstances. Now the question, when should I use formal versus informal Portuguese? Again, it depends and there's a lot of kind of cultural nuance around it. So as a beginner or a learner, my advice to you is to just stick to the polite default there and you can't really go wrong. So when you're asking for uh, the time, for example, you would use the polite version, which is using the third person singular. You'll be saying, tem horas? Do you have the time? The only time you would really be using the informal version of Portuguese is when you are speaking to somebody younger than you or when you are speaking to somebody that you are friends with, you already have a friendly relationship. But as I say, when you're getting started, it can be kind of difficult to determine when you kind of pass that point and when you do become more friendly with somebody. So I would just stick to the, the default of being polite. It's likely that as time goes on, somebody is going to be able to say to you, you can use tu with me, which is the informal way of speaking to somebody. I will usually kind of wait to be invited to do that, or I can take the lead from the other person as well. But just keep it simple while you're learning. Default to being formal when you're asking for things out and about, shopkeepers, neighbours, that kind of thing, and you can progress later. Another very hot question, how do I know if I am pronouncing something correctly? Now, there are tons of pronunciation rules. I've done loads of videos on pronunciation and I do always recommend it as the place to start because you're not going to be able to be understood by other people if you're not pronouncing something correctly. You could spend all this time memorizing a phrase and if you don't get that pronunciation correct, they're not going to understand you. So I do have a bit of a secret weapon that I recommend people keep in their pockets. It's an app called Lingui. And the reason I really, really like this app is because you can actually type in the word you're looking for and then a little speaker icon is next to it. And you can choose how to hear that word either in Brazilian or European Portuguese. So it's going to help you out whether uh, whichever of those variants that you are learning. So once you have done that, you can repeat it back make sure that you are saying it correctly before you go out and about and I think that's really going to help you be understood. Next question therefore is what are your tips for how to get started? So again I have a whole video on this that you can dive into more detail but my main piece of advice is think about why it is your learning. That takes me all the way back to the beginning when you're making this decision of should I learn Brazilian or European Portuguese. I actually want you to think about when are you going to be using your Portuguese? Why is it you're learning? Is it to speak to a grandmother in her native tongue for the first time? Is it so that you can navigate day to day life when you actually move to Portugal? Whatever your reason is, you need to be really, really clear on that and write it down so that you've actually got some clear goals to go through. From there, there is a wealth of content online now to help you out with your language learning, but I would definitely opt for something that has a very clear structure. Again, it can be super overwhelming when you're getting started. You want to make sure that the learning you are doing is efficient and it's structured in a way that's going to actually build on the previous things that you've learned, like a jigsaw puzzle or even like a Jenga puzzle where pieces go on top of each other. So I'm not a huge fan of textbooks. I think that they're kind of repetitive and they miss out the important practical stuff that you're going to need on a day to day basis in Portugal. So I would recommend checking out something like Memrise. I would recommend checking out um, tutors on places like Preply and italki. I do also have my own free lesson for beginners, so I highly recommend that as well. But there are tons of places that you can actually look for this. But what you want is a good match for your own objectives, right? Some people are out there and they need to learn super quickly for a job or something. So you need to actually look for something that is going to be intensive. Or some people think, well, I want to be able to speak in my day to day life in Portugal. So I want to have a Portuguese focused course that has practical stuff in it. All right. So that is is the place that you should be starting. Think about your own objectives and then find something that is actually going to deliver on that objective because language learning
learning isn't one size fits all. It's not the case that everybody is going to be suited by one particular teacher or one particular course or one particular type of learning. So really make sure you understand how you learn. Are you a visual learner? Do you need to be in person to actually get some accountability and get things done? Do you care more about the social aspect of it? Become really clear about all of those things and you'll be able to find the right teacher for you. I do hope that that has cleared the way for you. You're feeling a bit more confident about getting started with Portuguese. If you do want to study with me, because that's also a question I get a lot, how do I study with you? I do have an online program for beginners where you'll be working with me personally. All the information is in my free class for beginners, which is going to get you set off on the right foot and also include all the information on how to join. I will be back next time with more practical tips to power up your Portuguese. So I will see you then. Ciao for now, pessoal.